patches of oil on the shores of where I'm at here in Southern California from Huntington Beach down to Laguna Beach are likely to move south, according to the Coast Guard, after a leak in a pipeline sent more than 100,000 gallons of oil gushing to the surface, polluting the water and beaches for miles. It's still unclear exactly what or when it happened, but the CEO of Amplify Energy, the company that owns the pipeline, said they've examined more than 8,000 feet of pipe and are looking into a specific point of interest. Meanwhile, authorities are investigating the possibility the pipe was hit by a ship's anchor. Since the pandemic began, long lines of backed up cargo ships waiting to dock in Long Beach Harbor have been visible from the shores of Huntington, and it's possible a ship's anchor may have hit a pipeline. A recovering cleanup effort is underway on the beach, which could take months. Huntington Beach Mayor Kim Carr called the oil spill one of the most devastating situations the community has dealt with in decades. You know, Kim, Kim, what's it what's it like out there? You know, I went there yesterday. I drove down there, and actually, everything looked pretty normal um, from w what I saw. What I saw. So the cleanup crews have been doing a really great job, at least on the beach. Um, I know that there's still a lot of oil in the water, but they are allowing people to go and in, in, in a lot of areas of the beach beyond the beach. They're just not allowed to go into the water. So there are some signs up, but they've done a really good job of cleaning up the oil. Um, I mean, but, it, you know, this is definitely something that people are very concerned about, especially people who do like to go out there and surf and fish and enjoy. And of course, tourism is being hit by this. A lot of tourists are saying, well, I was going to go stay in Huntington Beach, which is near Disneyland and, you know, all of the theme parks. And um, and now people are saying, oh, I'm going to change my change my plan. So there's a lot of a, a lot of concern. But a lot of people are really concerned about how this happened and not just how it happened, but why it took so long for the report to actually make its way fully to the company to where they would actually do something about it. It was hours and hours. I mean, they days. I mean, it was Friday night. They received an alert uh, that there was maybe something amiss. The Coast Guard says, well, but, you know, that was something that those types of alerts happen all the time. You know, it's pretty kind of par for the course. And they call the person who did the report and they ask them some questions to see if there's anything else they should do about it. And then nightfall happened and they couldn't really see the oil. And so it was only, you know, until morning that they finally said, oh, gosh, there's something really terrible happening here. And they finally went out there and said, OK, we have to, do, you know, shut the oil off. We have to we have to stop the spill. So, you know, that is the big concern is, is when did this when was this uh, known and why did they allow the oil to leak into the ocean for hours upon hours upon hours? California legislators are now saying they would push to block any new federal drilling leases in the Pacific Ocean along the West Coast. According to the Washington Post, a moratorium on new leases in California's state waters, which extend three miles from shore, has been in place since a massive 1969 oil spill off Santa Barbara. California Congressman Ted Lieu and Congresswoman Julia Brownlee said in a statement, quote, the majority of Californians oppose offshore drilling, and with aging infrastructure, we're more likely to see we're likely to see more oil spills in the future if we don't make a change now. It's time to put an end to offshore drilling in California. Our environment and our communities depend on it. Tuesday, Governor Newsom vowed that California would block any new efforts to drill off its coast in state or federal waters, but acknowledged that getting rid of drilling operations that are already in place is a much harder task. Yeah, I have to assume this is going to, uh, there wasn't probably much political appetite for <laughs> in California among its, you know, heavily Democratic base to do a lot of additional drilling offshores. And this probably makes people even more militantly against it for good reason. Yeah, I mean, for sure. But, you know, because California is definitely a very blue state and especially in these areas, although Huntington Beach is actually quite conservative. But, um, you know, it, really the big question that a lot of people are asking again out here, it really comes down to the timeline of when were they notified? Why? Why did Amplify Energy take so long? They knew that there was a pressure leak in the pipeline. They should have investigated that right away or whenever there is this sort of pressure leak, they should have shut it down right away. Um, and that didn't happen. And so a lot of people are saying, look, yeah, if we can't stop the current oil, the drilling and these pipelines that are already in existence, then we, de we do need to have some other, other uh, safety mechanisms that ensure that if a leak happens or when leaks should happen, I should say, because we know they do, which is why so many of these pipelines have been opposed going through um, water regions and, and through native land. And so when these pipelines are there and they do leak, then 
what what mechanism, what safety mechanism is in place to ensure that the leak is stopped immediately, not hours later or days later. It needs to be happening immediately. How, how significant is the push, Kim, to get these ongoing operations shut down? You know, it's one thing to say, all right, we're not going to do any more of this in the future, but you know, how, how big is the push to, to just shut, shut down everything that's going on now, particularly now that we know that you know, we, we can't burn all of the known uh, fossil fuel reserves and, and stay under you know, the, the 1.5 or, or even a two degree threshold that we're going for and when it comes to climate change. Right. Well, I mean, here in, in California, most people want to end uh, drilling and our reliance on fossil fuels. So that's the California constituents are very much on board with that. But the government is a whole different story. And if you remember when Gavin Newsom was dining at French lobby at uh, French laundry, he was sitting with a lobbyist and that and that lobbyist does, uh, from what I remember, rep does represent some of these big oil, you know, in drilling interests. So, um, it, you know, I mean, that's this is the problem we're all having in America, right? Is what the constituents want is a bit different than what the donors want for our politicians, and our politicians often follow the money, which is right. not coming from us, apparently. Tomorrow on Rising, Matt Taby joins us to discuss his latest piece, News is America's Religion. Plus, Emily Jashinsky is back. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.